Good evening, everybody. Could we all stand this evening? I wonder if it'd be okay if we could just go to the Lord in prayer this evening, pray for our pastors who are out of town in Ohio today, and they'll be for the rest of the week. Could we enter into prayer for the service, for our fellow brothers and our sisters that are standing right next to us, and then most of all, for what God will speak to us in this service tonight. Could we all lift our hands and open up in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, we ask that you would meet us where we are right now as we enter into the house, Lord, with thanksgiving on our lips, Lord, and prayerful hearts among us, Jesus. I pray that you would reach down to where we are, that you would speak to us, Lord, that you would encourage, that you would help, that you would uplift us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would send the Holy Spirit to convict our hearts and our minds, to conform us to your image tonight. But most of all, Lord, we want to give you glory. We want to give you praise. We want to worship you tonight, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We give you the glory, the praise, the honor that is rightfully due unto you. In Jesus' name, as a church we pray, amen. amen. Worship the Lord tonight.
one of his epistles like this Paul a prisoner of Jesus Christ it's it's backwards thinking when it comes to the word he used well if you're a prisoner aren't you aren't you bound by somebody doesn't somebody hold you captive I, I stole this from brother Jose when he last time I heard him preach it was amazing it says Paul a prisoner of Jesus Christ somebody totally captivated somebody totally held hostage by Jesus Christ how do how do I find freedom be a hostage by Jesus Christ. How do I find freedom over addiction in my life? Be a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Let him have the reins to your soul and your heart. How do I find freedom? By giving our all to Jesus. Give your all to Jesus and he can set you free. Be eternally bound to Christ and you will be eternally free forever. Could we sing that? Give your all to Jesus. If you know about that freedom, worship him tonight. worship as you're seated this evening glory to God if the ushers can make their way up here I am I am so glad when my way of thinking and my own my own framework that I put Jesus into gets broken sometimes because it's my framework is if I'm bound or if I'm captivated by someone I'm held hostage I'm so glad when I learned that no if I am captivated by Jesus I am eternally free 
Again, remember our pastors as they are preaching at a camp meeting in Ohio. Very rarely do they get to go and do this. We have some of the most faithful and most loyal and hardworking pastors, not just in East Texas, not just in Texas, across this globe. And I'm so grateful if we can give them a hand. They're not here, but we can give them a hand of appreciation. Such an honor having them as our pastor. So please pray for them that the Lord meet them where they are and bring them back quickly and safely. And some more announcements, HTC announcements. Peanut Butter and Jesus, Saturday, October the 14th at 9.30 a.m. I have been waiting for this. I can't wait for October the 14th. If you want to do some great outreach, have a lot of fun with some friends, but also spread the gospel, please show up October the 14th at 9.30 We're going to meet at the church and make the sandwiches, and then we're going to go out at 1030 and pass them out. We'll be praying for people. We'll be passing out sack lunches. We'll be spreading the love of Jesus to our local community. And if you want to be a part of that, please see Brother Brian Davis for any information. That's all the announcements I have. You've heard the rest of them. I hope we've been writing them down. I haven't. I have to always ask. So, Brother uh, Richard, if you would please bless the offering. Who? <laughs> 
Thank you, musicians and singers, for that anointed worship. You may be seated this evening. Our classes may be dismissed this evening except for the youth class. You'll be staying in the sanctuary today, so the rest of the classes can be dismissed. I missed one announcement. is that Pastor Appreciation will be Sunday, October the 15th. There'll be a potluck lunch after the church. Please bring food. Dessert will be provided. So bring enough for your family and just one extra. And if, if we do that, we'll have enough food for everybody. But classes can be dismissed except the youth. Speaking of faithful and hardworking, if Brother Jose would please make his way to this pulpit. Somebody that I really appreciate and get the honor of working alongside of. He's going to bring the word to us tonight. Get behind him, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who am I to have experienced a love like this? Who are we that are deserving of his forgiveness and redemption? Oh, but all I can say is thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that blood. It is such a privilege and an honor to serve the God that we serve. Amen. And it is a privilege and an honor to stand behind this pulpit. Although our pastors are not here, I do want to extend that uh, word of appreciation to Pastor Matt and Sister Tori. It is a great privilege, and I do not take it lightly. Uh, it is a great privilege and honor to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And without taking any much time, I would just like to dry, dry, dive straight into it. And so if we may turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 32, very familiar portion of Scripture. And as y'all turn there, I'd just like to, you know, thank Brother Matt for, for the vision of the School of Ministry. It's, it's, it's been such a blessing and an encouragement seeing this, this new class come in and not only first-year students but second-year students as well. Uh, just people that are hungry and on fire for the Lord. And it, it truly is a blessing being able to have them here with us. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 32, we'll be reading a, starting in verse 24, if we may. Those that are able to stand for the reading of, of the word. Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 reads as follows. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man, and hast prevailed. And so, if I may, just for a couple of minutes, just share on this thought being, Breakthrough is coming, with a subtitle, Prevailing with God. Breakthrough is coming prevailing with God. May we just bow our heads, close our eyes, and go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that is already in this sanctuary. God, we thank you for the way that you've been moving, the way that you've been speaking. Lord, here at Harvest Time Church, Lord, at our churches back home, Lord, we thank you for the anointed worship, the anointed, Lord, singing. And Lord, we thank you for this word that you, Lord, have given us that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, we pray, may the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon us today. God, may the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, rest upon these lips, rest upon our ears to hear that which you would have us to hear God we will be quick and careful to give you all the praise all the glory for you are worthy Lord it is at this evening Lord that we exalt you Lord above every other name above every other circumstance or situation Lord and we are believing that breakthrough is coming in the name of Jesus we pray thank you Lord amen we may be seated tonight we're we're found in the book of Genesis, and just to give a, a quick background information, Esau and Jacob were brothers, both sons of, of Isaac, and we see that Esau, after coming back from a hunt, he could not find anything to eat, and he ended up approaching his brother Jacob and telling him, hey, sell me a pottage of lentils, right, and I will give you my birthright. And Jacob later tricks his father and to blessing him, he stole the, the blessing that was meant for Esau. And so we see that Esau was coming after his brother, right? We see that after a long period of time, Jacob is forced to run to his uncle Laban, where he worked for 20 years, right? Seven years for his two daughters and his six years for his cattle. 
And we see that Jacob only wants to be able to partake of his blessings. He wants to be able to enjoy of his family, enjoy of the cattle, enjoy of the livestock. And we see that after tricking his, his uncle, Jacob is found running again, right? And so we see that Jacob is in this place where he is found in need. He's running from his father-in-law, right? Running from his brother. He's only trying to enjoy of his blessings, and yet he's found in this place all alone, right? And so we see that it is at this brook by the name of Jabok that Jacob is found alone, where he wrestled with a man who commentaries believe was the angel of the Lord, often identified with God himself, right? And so scripture tells us, and if I may just uh, focus in on, on this verse, verse 28, saying, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. This word prevailed means to gain ascendancy through strength or superiority, to be or become effective or effectual, or to prove greater than, right? And so we see that Jacob was able to come to this place of superiority. He was able to ascend to this place only because he found himself in that place alone with God, a place that he was able to call Penal, right? For he said, I have seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. Amen. And so we see that this place called Penal is not a place of riches, it's not a place of blessings, but it's a place where God can meet you and I alone, right? Yes, it is important for us to surround ourselves with brethren of like precious faith. Yes, it is important for us to congregate ourselves in churches in the house of the Lord. But God is focused and is wanting our intention individually, right? He is wanting my attention. He is wanting your attention. He is wanting our individual attention. God has called Jacob to that place to be alone. God has called Jacob up, to, up into that place to suffer and wrestle, right? And so to us, what is that question in life? God, is it truly you that is calling me? To be all alone? Is it truly you that is allowing me to suffer these afflictions? Is it truly you that's allowing me to struggle with these mind battles to go through the things that I've been through, right? God is not as more focused in on our relationship with Him than He is with our comfortability, right? And it is no coincidence that you and I have gotten to the point where we can't bear the struggles in life, where the cares and worries of this life have overwhelmed us, where the agonies of this mind and body seem to have gotten the best of us. Combine that with the continuous attack of the enemy, trying to continuously choke us out, take us out for the count. But Lord, help us to change our perspective. Right? Lord, help us to change our attitude. Lord, right? to change our attitude into thinking, if this is what it takes to be able to see my breakthrough, then so be it. Right? I'm not going to depend on the breakthrough of the person next to me. If it takes me getting alone, I'll get my breakthrough. I don't know what you've came to do, but I came here to get my breakthrough. And I'm going to do what it takes to experience that breakthrough. Why? Why is it that this angel of the Lord didn't prevail against Jacob? Why is it that Jacob was the one that came out prevailing? God with all his glory and power. Could have stricken Jacob dead right there and then. Why then didn't the angel of the Lord did so? There's a pastor that once preached, God is not in the business of knocking your legs from under you, but he is getting you to a place where you can surrender. He may not be knocking our legs from under you and I, but we can say that he is trying to get us down on our knees. And I can only imagine that when Jacob was wrestling with this angel, that he couldn't help but, but fall down on his knees as he was wrestling. And perhaps two knees, right? And so we see that as he was wrestling with the Lord, as he was down on his knees, the scripture tells us that it was then that the battle began. It was then that Jacob wrestled, right? The battle only begins whenever you and I get down on our knees. The battle only begins when our eyes are focused on that which is said before us. And so we see that Jacob wrestled until, to, until the rising of the sun. And I can't help but think that as the sun rose, that Jacob's children came out of their tents running. Maybe little son uh, Dan came out, followed by, by Gad and Asher and Joseph and his mother Rachel. And then they couldn't help but, but, but see a difference in Jacob's, in Jacob's posture. And as they tried approaching him, I can't help but imagine that Jacob 
you know, reached out a hand with a, with, while he was limping towards them. And I can't help but imagine that, that their family, out of instinct, started to worry, right? They started saying, Jacob, father, what is wrong? What is wrong? And I can't help but think that, that at this time, Leah joined and the rest of the children came. And I can't help but imagine that Jacob told them, don't worry, I'm okay. I have seen God face to face and we're going to be preserved. My walk may be different, but my life is preserved, right? I'm not going to be living the same life I used to live. I'm not going to live the same way I used to. But because I got my breakthrough, I'm going to walk a different walk, right? The Lord touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, the very part of his body that Jacob needed to do what he was, quote, unquote, meant to do. Jacob and his children were children that were travelers, that were sojourners, people that lived in tents. Jacob needed that leg. He needed that thigh to be able to get to the next place he needed to be. And God touched that set, that very same part he needed for that. May that be our prayer, Lord, have your liberty to touch that areas in our life that are, we use as crutches. Lord, touch those areas in our life that we're using as crutches that are damming up the floodgates of heaven, right, from us seeing our breakthrough. You know, yes, I'm satisfied, I'm thankful. Rather, I'm not satisfied, but I'm thankful to see the small breaches in that dam, right? But I'm not going to be satisfied with those small breaches. I want that dam to be broken. I want those floodgates of, of heaven to open up and breakthrough to come. Why is it that the angel of the Lord didn't prevail against Jacob? Simple. God wanted to show Jacob that the promise he had given his father Abraham and his father Isaac could too be his, right? But all it was going to take was him clinging on to God. God had promised Jacob, your seed will be as the dust of the earth and as the stars in the sky. And just as you have obeyed and placed your trust in me to come back to the land of your fathers and your kindred, I will be with thee. There's promises of breakthroughs, promises of healing, promises of seeing our lost family members get saved, promises of getting filled with the Holy Ghost, right? What is it going to take for you and I to get that breakthrough? It's going to take for us clinging on to God, right? And I can't help but imagine that as Jacob was wrestling, he couldn't help but cling on to God harder and firm, right? And as, they, and as that thigh was hurting him, he only clinged on to God even more, right? For us, as those afflictions come, as those pains come, as tribulations come, you and I must be able to cling on to God even more. You and I must be able to get a grip of those promises of God until we see that breakthrough. Amen. Amen. The Lord touched that part that Jacob needed in order for him to do what he was quote unquote meant to do, right? Church, you and I were meant to walk with a limp. A limp shows a sign of weakness. And when we see a person that's limping, we can't help but shift our attention to that person, right? Someone that struggles to get from point A to point B. Someone that perhaps stumbles on themselves but yet perseveres but yet continues to walk, but yet continues to prevail, right? Let that be the testimony of the church that happens whatever happens, right? No matter what struggle, no matter what pain, no matter what battle, no matter what struggle, the church of God will continue to march on. The church of God won't stop until we see our breakthrough, right? What does it mean to prevail with God? Right, prevailing with God is not based on our definition, but on the way he wants us to prevail, right? We can only do so much with our own strength, with our own knowledge. And church, I've tried it on my own. I've tried fighting. I've tried getting my breakthrough using my own knowledge, own wisdom. I've tried using my own tactics and strategies, and I could only go so far, right? But I'd rather be limping all 400 meters and getting to that goal line than to stress myself 300 meters only to to get to that last curve and fall short you and I can only get so far Jacob sent gifts to his brother trying to soften the blow right Jacob was blessed with cattle he was blessed with with goats and camels and bulls but he found himself in great turmoil and fear 
Jacob relied on the labor of his hands to spare him. And it wasn't until he wrestled with God that he found that peace, that he found that assurance, right? So where should you and I prevail? In that same place that Jacob prevailed in. It's in that secret place. For when we prevail in that secret place, we will prevail in that public place. It was Brother Clendenin said, Brother Clendenin that said, power, or sorry, uh, purity in the secret place equates to power in the public place. Amen. We want to be able to see that breakthrough. There must be a prevalence in God, a prevailing in God, prevailing with God in that secret place. Right? We see Daniel, great man of God, that for 21 days he was praying and fasting and heard nothing from God until that angel came. And we read in the 10th chapter of the book of Daniel, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. Below, Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to me, or sorry, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Right? David was prevailing with God. It didn't seem like Daniel was getting anywhere, and Daniel continued to pray. And Daniel continued to remain faithful to the Lord. Daniel had a promise. He knew breakthrough was coming. And he said, no matter what it takes, even if I don't hear anything, even if I don't feel anything, right, I don't have to wait until the beat of the drum or until sister so-and-so hits a certain note. I'm going to prevail with God until I see that breakthrough. I don't have to wait till they hit that note. I don't have to wait till they sing that certain song. To the beat of that drum. But I will prevail with God. I will prevail with God until I see my breakthrough. Amen. Jacob had to quit fighting the call of God to get a hold of the promises he had, that God had given to Abraham and Isaac. And all he had to do was cling on to God. In order for us to see that breakthrough, you and I must cling on to God. You and I must be willing to prevail with God. Not against God, but with God. Jacob prevailed in the mountain. Joseph prevailed. He got that breakthrough, not in Pharaoh's throne, not at his feet, but Jacob prevailed. He got his breakthrough in the pit, in that jail cell. Joshua prevailed. He got his breakthrough standing in front of Jericho walls. The nation of Israel prevailed and seen their breakthrough coming out of Egypt. How will that prevailing with God look for us? It's not going to look any different. Breakthrough is only going to come whenever we get to that point of desperation, right? We think to ourselves, God, I can only take so much, but it takes all of that in order for breakthrough to come. You look at a bubble, you fill it up with air with helium. It's only a matter of time that after you fill it up with air that it, that it bursts, right? Breakthrough is only going to come at that time of desperation. When we think that we can't take it anymore, that's when the Lord shows up. Right, because he's a God uh, that shows up right on time. Amen. Breakthrough's not going to come when we want it. Breakthrough's going to come when the Lord ordains it. Whenever we get to the point where we're so desperate for it that we will prevail with him, whether we feel like it or not. Whether brother so-and-so is preaching or sister so-and-so is singing. Right, whether, whether a certain band or a group is ministering. No, you and I will see that breakthrough. Whenever we choose and make up our minds to prevail with God in that secret place. The nation of Israel, it is their culture not to eat that certain part of the animal. Right? The scripture even tells us that. That because the Lord touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, that the Jews don't eat that part of, of, of an animal, of, of, of their food. The breakthrough that Jacob got at that point was not just for that moment. It was a breakthrough that lasted for generations, right? His breakthrough caused a complete change in the way that they live and their culture. Church, our breakthrough is not just going to be a breakthrough of our present time. It's not just going to be a breakthrough of a certain day, of a certain amount of days. But our breakthrough is going to have a lasting effect. Amen. 
The longer we wait, the longer we will praise, says a song. The longer it takes for us to be able to see that breakthrough, the longer I'm going to say, the longer we must be able to say, God, no matter what it takes, I will prevail. God, no matter the struggle, no matter the pain, no matter the hurt, God, I will prevail with you in my secret place. Amen. And so if we may, if the musicians may come up tonight. You know, the names of, of Jacob's sons, Dan, Nephtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, Joseph. they all have a meaning. Dan, being God is my judge. Nephtali, in my wrestling. Gad, which means, if I remember correctly, a troop cometh. Asher. Happiness and Joseph adding or addition. And we see that in Jacob's life, he had a troop coming after him. His brother was coming after him with 400 men. And it was in his wrestling, it was in his wrestling that God was able to bring him that happiness, that breakthrough. It was in that wrestling that Jacob was able to have added into his life the blessings that God had given his, his father and his grand, grandparent. Church, you and I are not going to see our breakthrough if we're not willing to wrestle for it. We like to wait and hear of somebody else getting their breakthrough. And we wait until that causes a chain of, of events, a chain of, 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 of actions to take place, believing that they'll eventually reach us. Let us not wait until someone else gets their breakthrough. And not trying to sound selfish, I want you to get your breakthrough. I want the brother next to me, the sister next to me to get her breakthrough. But I came here to get my breakthrough too. Right. And if it be the case that after a breakthrough, a chain of events happen, then Lord, I'm going to strive and prevail so that I could get my breakthrough and then ultimately cause a chain of events for somebody else to get theirs. But church, in order for us to see that breakthrough that is coming, there must be a, a, a made up mind for us to prevail with God. It is only then that we're able to, go, that we're only able to, to, to see that breakthrough, right? And we can pray to the, to the top of our lungs and sing and shout and dance and preach and sing and minister. But if we don't prevail with God, if we quit fighting, if we quit trying to dam up the blessings of God with our own efforts, it is only then that we'd be able to see that breakthrough come. And so I'm gonna ask if we may stand tonight The way the Lord has been moving and speaking these last couple of weeks, I don't know about y'all, but I've been stirred. You know, revival didn't have to just last three days, but revival should be burning inside each and every one of us after those amazing services, after the ministering of the, of the school of ministry and the word that was brought forth through testimony, song, and preaching. Church, my heart is, is burning. My heart is stirred. And I do believe that breakthrough is coming. I'm thankful for what God did in these last couple of services, the way he's been moving. But I think that the best is yet to come. I still think that there's a greater breakthrough awaiting us. I still think that the church is not to the point where God wants it to be. How can we get there if we prevail with God? Breakthrough's coming. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. How worth it? It's going to take us prevailing in that secret place. And I know it's a different approach to this scripture. 
we put the emphasis on, on the place Penal. But Jacob could not have gotten his victory, could not have gotten that breakthrough if he had not seen or met God face to face. And I make that invitation this evening. My heart's been stirred. And I want to be able to see breakthrough come, not only in my life, but in the life of my family, the life of the youth group, and the life of the church, right, in the, in the body of Christ, across the nation, across the world. There's a breakthrough that is coming. How much longer are we going to hinder that breakthrough from getting here? How much longer are we going to hinder the, the, the move of the Holy Ghost by trying to take matters into our own hands? Jacob had to quit fighting. He had to wrestle. He had to tug. And even being hurt, even with the thoughts of wanting to give up, he was flesh, he was man. He probably doubted, he probably feared. But he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not stop prevailing with God until I see that breakthrough. And so I make that invitation this evening. If you have that promise of seeing a breakthrough in your family, a breakthrough in, in, in your life, whether it be finances, in your marriage, if it be a breakthrough that, that you're looking for in, in, in relationships, if it be a breakthrough in the church, if it be a breakthrough in your own personal life, there's a place you and I can go to. A place you and I can prevail with God. And that is down at these altars. Amen. And so I'll make that invitation tonight. If that be you, let us come not only with, with questions and not only with, with a hunger and a desire, but with an expectation to see breakthrough come, to see breakthrough in our lives. Amen. Like there is no way, and I feel like your chains won't break. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, something's about to change. You might feel like there is no hope, staring at a Jericho. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, something's about to change. Somebody shows up on the sea something's about to change you want to see a slave go free you want to see a dead man rise cause when Jesus shows up on the sea you know something's about to change somebody speak the name somebody sing his praise somebody Oh, you 
might feel like there is no way Might feel like your chains won't break Cause when Jesus shows up on the scene Something's about to change You might feel like there is no hope Staring at a cherry chains won't break oh but when jesus shows up on the scene you know something's about to change you might feel like there is no hope you're staring at a cherry
came to the place and watched dead things live again. One touch of His grace and it's all washed away. He's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been, whatever you have faced. Don't be afraid to take Him to the place. Just take Him to the place. Watch dead things live again. One touch of His grace. And it's all washed away. He's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been, whatever you have faced. Don't be afraid to take him to the place. Take him to the place. Watch dead things live again. One touch of his grace, and it's all washed away. And he's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been, whatever you have faith. Don't be afraid to take him to the place and watch dead things. So washed away, he's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been, whatever you have faced, don't be afraid. There's breakthroughs happening tonight. If we could all stand, you may keep singing tonight. There's breakthroughs in this altar. There's breakthroughs when the word of God gets brought forth upon a people who are ready to receive it. There's breakthroughs in this place. Could we begin to continue to worship? Could we just close our eyes, lift up our hands? We may pray this way for our sister here receiving a breakthrough, for our brothers over here receiving breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting with us. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing forth your word tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for breakthrough that we feel in you, God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And watch it. Oh, God, we believe that breakthroughs in this place. One touch yes, of his hallelujah. grace, and it's all washed away, and he's calling out your name. It doesn't matter where you've been, whatever you have faced, don't be afraid to take him to the place and watch him. I'm not going to dismiss this service for these altars. There's breakthrough happening, so I'm not going to dismiss them. If you need to be dismissed tonight, feel free to be dismissed. But if you want to stay and linger for your breakthrough, if you want to be like Jacob and not leave until you get your breakthrough, and you want to prevail with God, these altars are still open for you. But if you need to be dismissed, be dismissed tonight. Go, be come back Sunday, ready for a word from our pastor. Love you, Harvest Time. If you need to be dismissed, be dismissed. If you need your breakthrough, come get your breakthrough tonight. Love you, Harvest Time. To the place where dreams were shattered And you felt you rocked the race Where the only thing that's left is 
Call 